So welcome and good morning. This is our 28th class, I think, and we've been meeting together like this for so long. One of these days we're going to meet in a, a classroom situation and we're going to one on one, you know, yoga teachers like to adjust. <laughs> and if I can't, I can't come around and tap you on the shoulder or your foot or your ankle. I'm feeling a little left out here. So maybe I'm missing that. But I have a few a few students behind us today. So welcome. And uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of different things about our breath. So first of all, um, I'm going to read something to you. Um, well, no, not yet. Sorry. <laughs> Later. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted to just share with you that one of my students mentioned this morning that she would like to do some work with our shoulders. So if you would just um, remember that when we have angst in our lives, the stress and the anxieties and the, um, the pressure of not only just the, the whole political scene, but the COVID lockdown scene, everybody seems to be a little bit on edge. And where does all that tension end up? But in our shoulders. And so we eat like this, we drive like this, we read like this, we look at the computer like this. So where are your shoulders right now? Can you relax them? Oh, good. Oh, I see those shoulders dropping. All right, good job, everybody. White Wolf, are you relaxing? No. Everybody's relaxing. <laughs> Relax the shoulders back and down, sitting nice and tall. So sit back in your chair or sit up in your uh, on your mat, nice and tall, with your shoulders roll back and down. And just see how that feels to elongate the back of the neck as well by tucking the chin in, closing your eyes, and just being with your breath for a few minutes. Sometimes we, um, we hold on to angst that affects everything. So it's affecting your breathing, it's affecting your eating, it's affecting everything. It's affecting your posture. It's affecting all the organs in the body because they're not in a relaxed mode where the blood can flow and the oxygen can go to the brain where it needs to go. And so these are these are things that we have to think about. And so with that being said, um, I'd like to really focus on doing some good shoulder work today. I mean, if you end up with these little knots getting to be boulders in your shoulders, White Wolf said that earlier, shoulder boulders, then you need a professional to rub them out <laughs> to release that knot that becomes so tight that you just can't do it on your own. So let's let's hope we're not at that stage in our in our um, our lives at this time uh, with all of the the um, well the stressful. Um, I call it the matrix, with all of the outside peripheral stuff happening. So to get into a more inward uh, focus, let's just close our eyes. That's right. And breathing now gently through the nostrils will help us to get centered. I have this little monkey here. If you want to just open your eyes for a minute. Remember I talked about how the monkey mind gets in the way all the time. And this little monkey, if you can see him, He's my representation to quiet down all the chatter. I've had a lot of bigger monkeys on and scattering around me in the past, but this little monkey is, is what I, I think I've got left now. So I'm going to keep that monkey as quiet as can be. Little monkey. That's it. We don't want him chattering too much. We want to quiet him down. That's it. So I'm going to ask you all, if you will, to um, maybe mute so we don't have any outside peripheral noise going on. And then if you have any areas of concern other than shoulders, raise your hand and tell me now before you mute yourself because we're going to focus on those shoulders. Nope, so far so good? All right, great. All right, so thank you for coming. And again, um, welcome to Carol's Gentle Chair Yoga class today, November 2nd, right? Dia de las Muertos. So this is the day that we are going to go focus inward and maybe towards the memories of dear ones as well. So you're the dear one in my life. <laughs> All right. So relax and close those eyes again. Relax the shoulders and just relax the palms up on top of your thighs for just a few more moments as we just concentrate on that nice breath that we talked about earlier that gets restricted and it gets sometimes um, uh, kind of uh, uh, rigid, you know, and it's not a smooth breath. So we want to calm it down. And to do that, I want you to pay attention to the breathing by just breathing in and out through the nostrils. 
and just observing it. Remember that we call this pranayama, breath awareness. When you observe the breath, notice if it's a little, a little um, jagged maybe, not as smooth as you'd like it to be. So see if you can smooth it down a little bit. And if you'll also notice not only the texture of the breath, but maybe the temperature of the breath. Maybe it's going in nice and cool this morning. It's a nice, cool morning. I know it's going to get warmer later, but right now, breathe in that nice, cool, fresh air. And really observe that, that feeling in the tips of the nostrils with a little cilia there that help to filter out all the dust and dirt. But just feel that coolness going into the nostrils as you breathe in. And then as you exhale out through the nostrils again, I want you to notice a temperature change, right? What happens is that all that nice fresh breath has had an opportunity to um, go into all the areas of the body that need to be refreshed. And then it, as it's all used up and stale and it releases back out, that's why it becomes a little bit warmer, making room for the next fresh breath to enter in. So keep this in mind as you take those nice, uh, breaths in and out. That's how important your oxygen really is. That's right. Don't restrict your oxygen inflow. It's vital for your brain, for your lungs, for your heart, for all the organs, all the, the miracle muscles in your body. Everything depends upon this fresh oxygen. And now, if you'll also notice the sound of the breath, so we're going to maybe restrict the glottis in the back of the throat. That's also going to help to calm us down this morning. As you as you breathe in, maybe you can imagine that sound you're hearing is similar to maybe the the sound of the breeze blowing through the trees today, maybe through the pine trees. Or if you have bamboo. <laughs> And now let's see if we can slow it down a little bit, right? Maybe to a count of four or five on the inhale. And maybe even five, even six on the exhale. So slowing it down, deliberately slowing it down. That's going to help those shoulders stay relaxed as well. And as you listen to the sound of that air, passing to the back of the throat, imagining that beautiful crisp morning air blowing through the leaves and the branches of the tree, fresh, freshening the air, nice fall weather, crisp air. Hmm. So we're going to bring our palms together in front of our chest in a prayer position. And I want you to cross your, th your thumbs gently over one over the other. And see if you can rest the top knuckle of that thumb against your sternum. And with that being said, you are actually making a connection to that beautiful miracle muscle. Yeah, the heart. That beautiful heart. That sometimes we never pay very much attention to her, to it. <laughs> Her it. But I believe that this is the most important thing in our whole lives. So this is the very first thing that develops in our, in our bodies is our beautiful heart. As it beats away now 100,000 times each day on an average. And appreciate all that work it's doing for us. And we don't even have to control it or regulate it. But we do have to feed it nourishing, nourishment with fresh air and oxygen. So we're going to do that right now by taking a deep breath into those beautiful lungs that massage that beautiful heart. So take a deep breath in to chant the sound of OM with me. Inhale. Relax your palms, float them back down to the thighs, if you will. Shake out those shoulders. 
dropping the chin to the chest as we usually do to get the neck moving a little bit, loosen it up, drop the chin to the, to the chest, and as you exhale, releasing all that stale air out of those lungs for a moment, stretching out the back of the neck, and then lifting the chin straight up and jutting out that lower jaw. This is where we get to stretch the muscles in front of the, the neck. If you stick out the lower jaw, kind of like you have an underbite, you'll feel the muscles stretching a little bit in the, the neckline here. And then as you exhale, tucking the chin in again, dropping the chin down, lengthening the back of the neck. Good. Inhale, lifting again. Don't hyperextend the back of the neck. Just jut out that lower jaw. You'll get the same lovely stretch in the front of that neck. And remember, this is your throat chakra. And this is the one that sometimes we um, forget to open and speak our truth. That's it. And then tuck the chin back in on the exhale. Tucking it in. Good. And then bring your, your chin back level, per, uh, perpendicular to Mama Gaia, and drop your, not I mean parallel, and then drop your right ear, let's see, your right ear will be, will be your mirror, your right ear over to your right shoulder. And see how that feels on the side of your neck. Sometimes we forget about the, the, the muscles along the side of the neck. Now, when you do that, I want you to lift your head up for a minute, take another deep breath, and lengthen the spine this time on your inhale. And then hold on to the chair with your left hand so that when you drop your right ear to your right shoulder or tuck it under your, your uh, hips if you're on the floor there, and as you drop your right ear to the right shoulder, I want you to feel a lovely stretch. Not only just the neck, but all the way down to the tip of that shoulder. And here's where we get to bring that right arm up and over the head, anchoring the fingertips above that, that left ear. And using that little extra weight is going to help to lengthen that huge trapezius muscle from the, the side of the neck to the jawline, all the way out to the tip of that shoulder. So now let's see if we can move that trapezius muscle around a little bit by lifting the chin up and looking up towards the sky, walking your fingertips towards the temples. So what you're doing is you're adding a little extra weight there to feel that jawline getting a nice stretch all the way out to the tip of your shoulder. And then as you look down towards the floor down on the right side, walk your fingertips back at the base of the skull where the little occipital lobe number tree is. You're adding a little extra weight there. Because those uh, trapezius muscles are stretching, they go all the way down your back. They attach to the spine. So they look like bat wings, really. And then lift your head up. Take that same right hand and put it on top of that shoulder, under the shirt, if you will. And see if you can find that muscle that we just stretched. And squeeze the muscle and raise it up off the top of that little clavicle, that, uh, that bone that goes across to the tip of the shoulder. And that's where all the knots might be. <laughs> so let's move that shoulder back and forth and see how that feels. And when you do that, you're going to feel that muscle moving in your hand. And if there's a little knot or two in there, give it a little extra TLC. Good job, everybody. I see those shoulders moving. Back and forth, White Wolf with your arm. That's okay. Yeah, move that, the other arm. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're actually allowing that muscle to stretch from the front to the back. That's good, everybody. All right. So let's shake that, that left shoulder out a little bit and drop your, um, your left ear to your left shoulder. We're going to try the opposite side. Hold on to the chair or tuck your palm under your hip if you're on the floor. Hold on to the leg of the chair so that your shoulder does not rise up when you lean over to your left side. <laughs> All right. When you do that, you can feel the stretching going on right here by the side of the neck. And then lift your head back up. Take another deep breath. This time we're going to lengthen the spine, and then we're going to rock over again to the left side, bringing the left arm up and over your head, anchoring the fingertips above the ear. I want you to feel the... A little bit of extra stretch that you're giving that trapezius muscle that really helps to warm it up right a little extra a little extra a little extra good and then we'll look down first to stretch the back of that trapezius warming it up walk the fingertips towards the base of the skull again that's it anchoring the fingertips right there and then looking up fingertips up towards the temples looking up towards the sky Feel that lovely stretch. Now that was the back. Now we're feeling the front. 
It's very subtle, but you can feel it when you rotate back and forth, that muscle. Yeah, good. And then lift your head back up. Take your left hand on top of your right shoulder. I'm trying to be your mirror here. <laughs> Grab that muscle in the palm of your hand under the shirt, and then move that arm, that right arm, back and forth. And see if you can feel that muscle moving in the palm of your hand. This is the tension. This is the tightness that we want to try to eliminate. Yeah, get rid of that. Stress, stress, stress. Be gone. <laughs> Calgon, take us away. <laughs> All right. So these are important moves, even, even though you feel like, oh, it's just, you know, routine stuff. But it really does help. All right, so now we're going to take both hands, and we're going to grab those muscles, and we're going to drag that muscle forward, one then the other. Oh, it just gives me goosebumps when I do this. It feels so good. Wishing my fingers were a little longer so they can go all the way down my back. Oh, yeah. And then if you want to do the little magic wand act, just kind of flip off all the excess. Like, we don't want any of that tension, any of that stress bothering us, right? Get, get rid of it. You can even start with the top of your head. And you go all the way down to those shoulders and flick it off. Just say, okay, shake it out, move around a little bit. Good. Now, I'm going to move back to my chair so I have a little bit more room for my arms. And I would suggest that um, you have some room, too. I'm just going to move this over this way. I've got a few things I'm going to bring with me. And my glasses so I can see everybody from a distance. All right. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to face you right now so you can see my arms moving. Now, I guess you can see me. I'll move the screen down just a tad. All right. All right, so here we go. We've got room for our arms. So take a deep breath and reach to the back of the room. Sit back in your chair nice and tall. Use the back of the chair for support. And when you do that, open your heart center when you take that first deep breath, inhaling in. And then on the exhale, this is where you get to wrap your arms around your torso and pat yourself on the back or shoulders for coming to chair yoga class today because your body will thank you, right? So what you do, what you're doing here is you're rotating a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, back and forth, just to see if that spine is a little stiff today. We've got to move some fluids around, right, back and forth. And so this is an area of the body that sometimes we forget to do little spinal twists because it's actually cleansing um, the, uh, the body's fluids so that our immune system stays nice and strong. This is the fall season, right? So now I want you to keep your elbows stacked and just bring the backs of your arms, your forearms up. And if you can touch your hands together, give yourself a hand. Yay. All right. <laughs> and we're going to raise those arms up on the inhale, lifting and lengthening. And you're going to feel the muscles in your back getting a good stretch. And then exhaling them gently towards your chest, tucking your abdominal muscles in, if you will. Let's do that one more time, inhaling the arms up. And exhaling them down. Good stretch. Those muscles along the back, those wings, right? And then we're going to bring the, the arms forward so you can feel your, your uh, deltoid muscles and your biceps getting a little stretch. And back. Good. Forward again one more time. And then back. Good. And then how about leaning over to the left and then to the right? See how that feels on your arms? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a lot of work for those shoulders, too. So now we're going to reverse. Now I want you to remember which elbow is on top because we're going to take a deep breath. So if my right, my, but anyway, just open your arms, stretch them all the way to the back of the room, lean into that chair, feel your beautiful lungs, and then exhale the opposite elbow on top. Again, find your shoulders, pat yourself on the shoulders, but this time I want you to walk your fingertips down a little bit. I want you to see if you can feel the little edges of those wings back there. We have little ankle wings. And those little wings back there are for the um, the uh, del the the, the rope. Ah, rhomboid. Sorry, rhomboid. Thank you, students. Well, good students. Remember rhomboids. Those rhomboids are hiding under the trapezius that we just released. And when you stretch from the left to the right, this time you can feel that muscle stretching from fingertip to fingertip. Good job, everybody. And we just got a newcomer. It looks like it's. Ariane Thomas, hi. Welcome, sweetie. So we're rocking side to side. All right, side to side. Welcome from Grass Valley, California. We got, we got uh, Colorado. We got Grass Valley. We got Jerome. <laughs> we got Sedona. We got them all. Good job, everybody. 
All right, side to side. And when we're doing this, we're stretching those rhomboids, remember. So this time, leave your elbows stacked and bring the backs of your arms or your forearms together. And if you want to, again, give yourself a hand for coming to yoga. Yay. And then lifting those arms straight up. You're going to feel those muscles that we just went from side to side getting a good stretch as well. As you lift the arms up, take a deep breath because that's going to expand the muscles in your back as well. And then as you exhale down, I want you to tuck the abdominal muscles in, tucking the elbows towards your chest. And again, lifting and lengthening. Coming all the way up. Good job. Exhaling down. Nice. And then we're going to move those arms to the left and then to the right. Feeling the deltoid muscles, the arms, the biceps. Good job. Everybody's getting a nice, good stretch with these beautiful arms. And now when we release this time, we're going to bring the arms all the way up to the sky. And just reach for the heavens. Lean back into your chair and roll those shoulders and arms all the way back and down on the exhale. Oh, oh doesn't that feel good? You got a lot of oxygen going up to the brain this time, too. All right. So these are really good things to do to just warm up everything on the upper torso. So how are your rib cages feeling? Are you feeling a little compressed from sitting so much? I have a, I have a, a Matilda back there. She's my skeleton. When I usually teach this class, she's sitting. And she's, she even feels compression in her ribs. So we're going to open up the rib cage by stretching the sides of our rib cage. So we're going to take a nice wide stance with our legs so we have some um, area to rest those forearms on when we stretch to the opposite side. So we're going to start off with your right side stretching. So place your left forearm on your thigh and reach up and over your head on the inhale. As you lift and lengthen, remember, we're getting a nice deep breath here. Oh, good stretch. And then exhaling as you slowly allow those fingertips to walk across the ceiling. And this time, roll that right shoulder back so you can still look up at the sky and feel how lovely that stretch is working on those ribs. And then inhale back up. And then exhale down. Good job. Remember what these little muscles are called in between those ribs? Intercostal. <laughs> good. I'm not going to test you. It's okay. Let's do that again. Inhale up. Taking a deep breath as you lift and lengthen. Fill your lungs and then exhale. Fingertips walking across the ceiling. And if you feel like stretching one leg out, getting a full stretch all the way down to the toes, keep going. Keep going. Honor that flexibility. We forgot to tell you to listen to the body, though, but you got to listen. If you want to go all the way across to the, to the wall, you're really getting a good stretch there. You can feel it all the way down to the side. Inhale, back up. And releasing down. Boy, I felt good on that side. Let's switch to the opposite side. So you can either stretch your leg out or just leave it uh, knee bent. Place the forearm of your right hand up on top of your thigh. Reach behind you with your left arm. Remember, big, deep inhale. Reaching up first, lengthening the spine. And then as you exhale, fingertips walking across the ceiling. Remember, roll that shoulder back so you can look up at the sky or the ceiling. Stretching fingertips to the hips all the way down to the toe if you like. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And then back up again on the next inhale. Nice stretch, everybody. All right. We're going to do that again. Everybody with me? Let's go. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Stretch, stretch, stretch up to the sky. And then all the way across. Leaning, leaning, leaning. Roll the shoulder back so you can still look up at the sky. Oh, what a lovely stretch. I can feel that all the way down in my hip bone. <laughs> Inhale, back up. And releasing. Woo! How is that going? I mean, these are the flank muscles. These are the obliques. Okay, some people call them the uh, muffin tops, but they're not going to get too big if we keep stretching them. This is better. <laughs> all right. So let's see if we can do a little bit more with our, our spine while we're here. We're going to do a spinal twist um, in the chair. So I'm going to have my chair turned sideways so that I can reach for the side of the chair on my spinal twist if we're sitting in a chair. If you're sitting on the ground, you could just reach opposite side. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to lift both arms up, take a deep breath, lift, 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 turn to the whatever side of the chair is next to you, Grab the chair, keep your elbows wide, relax your shoulders down, and exhale as you're looking towards the back of that chair. And as you do that, remember the only thing that's moving is your upper torso, so that means you're getting a nice spinal twist. 
And then lift your arms straight up again. Take a deep breath. Lift to the sky, turn, and then releasing palms back to your lap. Good. Try that again. Inhale all the way up. Lift and lengthen, twisting to your chair or to the side. Grab that chair like you're going to rip it apart. But this time, see if you can square your shoulders off with the back of that chair. Tucking your abdominal muscles in. Good job. Nice. And then lift up. Take a deep breath in. Return to the front. Palms to your lap. Let's just do one more for good measure. All right. Inhale all the way up. Twisting to the back of your chair or to the side. Grab the chair. Square the shoulders up. On your exhale, tuck abdominal muscles in. Oh, boy. Inhale back up. Palms forward and then down. Wow. Well, I'm going to switch to the opposite chair. If you want to go to the, your opposite chair or just um, or just turn around <laughs> and just listen to my words if you're not facing the screen. And as you inhale up, we're going to do the other side now. Take a deep breath up. Twist to the back of your chair. Elbows wide. Grab the chair. Square the shoulders off. Turning to that side. That's it. Tuck abdominals in. You can do it. Inhale back up. Release to the down to your lap. Good. Let's do two more. You ready? Inhale up. I see all those arms going up. Good job. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Twist to the back of your chair. Grab the chair. Like you're going to rip it apart. Elbows wide. Shoulders down. Exhaling. Ooh, nice. Inhale back up. Come to the front. Exhale, palms to the lap. Nice. Let's do that last one together. Inhale up. Reach, reach, reach. Twisting. Grab the chair. Exhaling. Wow. Inhale up. To the front and then to your lap. Woo. Boy, that's a lot of good work for that spine and those lungs and, and all the upper torso. We've got a lot of good movement on that today. So now I'm going to have you take your strap and we're going to do... Um, a stretch behind our back. So I guess if I leave my chair sideways, it'd be easier for you to see. So we're going to take the strap. We're going to use. We're going to do our arms one more time. We're going to take the loop of the the, the tie and um, the knot in our hand, and the loop goes over our back. Yeah, that was my home phone. <laughs> dingle, dingle, dingle. And we're going to drop the loop behind our back, and we're going to raise. The elbow up. Now I'm going to got this is my left arm. I'm going to do my left arm up first so you can really see. Left arm up. And I'm going to reach behind me with my right hand. And I'm going to find that loop. And then gently pull it down. So much so that my elbow on my left arm is straight up to the sky. I'm going to tuck it in where my ear is. And my head is going to be nice and erect. But I'm going to pull gently down on that loop so that my hand can stay at the middle of my back. And when I release the, the loop behind me, I'll walk my fingertips up a little bit. And we're going to get some uh, 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 bi bicep and tricep muscles working here, right? And as you walk your fingertips up a little bit higher, you might be able to get those to touch. Maybe get the pointer fingers to touch. Pointer fingers to touch, maybe. And now because we do tend to hyperextend the lower back, we're going to relax by forward folding down, releasing. By keeping your fingers where they are, releasing forward down, and then slowly come back up again. And then we're going to release the lower arm first. Just release it, shake it out a little bit, and then release the upper arm. And you might be able to feel a little bit of this muscle under the arm here. This is your tricep muscle getting a nice stretch. Good. So now we're going to switch to the other arm. So grab the knot or the end of the loop. Swing it over your shoulder, reach behind you, find the end of the loop, and pull down on the loop until that elbow is up into the sky, and maybe your bicep is resting by your ear. And as you do that, you can walk the lower hand up that strap, and maybe get those fingertips to touch. As long as you keep your, your upper, as long as you keep your upper arm up at the center of your back, and you can go reach behind you. There you go. You need to have some room in front so that you're not leaning up against the chair. And as you walk the fingertips up and down, you might you might be able to get them to touch. Maybe you can hook one fingertip over the other 
And then release the lower back by bowing gently forward. And then very slowly work your way back up. Release the lower arm first. Shake it out a little bit. Upper arm. Wow, that's a lot of work for those arms, right? <laughs> Got good, good motion going on here. All right. So it's time to take a little segment of refreshment. So grab your water bottle. We did a lot of deep breathing. And of course, if you've been in my class, you know what this means. We're just detoxing. When we, when we release all those toxins, we tend to uh, dehydrate. So to your health. Hmm. To you. <laughs> calling up ourselves to groaners back here. Every every move is like, oh. Uh, I think I got some satisfied customers coming up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we did a lot of shoulder work today, so how you're feeling there. So now let's work on the lower part of our torsos a little bit. So we're going to warm up the uh, hip flexors a little bit by first stretching one leg out on the chair in front of us. And we're going to take the strap or the tie, we're going to put the loop of that on the bottom of that one leg. And we're going to sit nice and, well actually we're going to sit on the edge of our chair. So if your chairs aren't far enough apart, move them back so that you have just the sits bones at the very tip of the chair. The reason for that is we want to have some room behind us, okay? We want to keep our spine nice and straight. And we're going to lean back and lift the leg up as we lean back to create, to continue the L shape of the torso. And as you lean back, it's your upper back that White will bring your hips at the edge of the chair. Yes, keep walking them. That's it. Keep walking your hips so that your little sits bones are right at the edge of the chair. There you go. Scoot, scoot, scoot. And this gives your, your back some space, which means if you keep your spine nice and straight and your shoulders roll back and down, you'll use the back of the chair for support for your upper back as you lift that leg up. Now, if that's comfortable, you can raise it a little higher, and then down, and a little higher, and then down. So we're getting movement in not only the hips, but the back of the hamstrings, too. Good. Use both hands. You can do it. Keep your spine nice and straight. Lean against the back of the chair, and you're going to feel these muscles in the back of the hamstrings getting a nice stretch. Go a little higher if that's comfortable. Good. Honor that flexibility. Some of us have, have stiff hips. Just go as far as those hips will allow. And then I want you to release the opposite hand and hold on to the leg of the chair or the, the earth and then swing that leg all the way out to the side. Now you can only go maybe a quarter of the way and then back, but keep it up and another quarter of the way and back. If you want to go halfway out to the side, now you're starting to feel the hip flexors getting a nice stretch. Good job, everybody. Hold on to the chair. I don't want you to fall off your chair. <laughs> Good. All right. Anyone want to go all the way over? Woo! That's a big stretch, everybody. Those hip flexors are getting a good stretch. One more time. All the way over. Woo-hoo! And then back. Good job. Did you feel that? I felt it. <laughs> Place the strap on the chair in front of you and raise that right leg back, or that leg, whatever leg you're working on. And I want you to interlace your fingers and hug that knee to your chest so you're actually um, massaging all the internal organs back and forth. See how that feels. So now this is, um, actually this is my right leg. So my, my lungs are getting a nice um, uh, massage. And also um, my... D, my ascending colon for digestion is getting squeezed. If you had breakfast not too long ago, you're helping to digest it. All right. And now lifting the knees up and down, too. See how that feels. How are your knees doing? And flex your heels so you get your calf muscles engaged. That's it. And then keep your leg out there for a minute and rotate your ankles. How are your ankles feeling? Are they a little swollen? Are you getting enough exercise? Are you walking? Yay. Good. Nice. Flexation. All right. So we got a lot of movement in this leg. Feels really good to me. So far, so good. It can move now back and forth, side to side. So I'm going to place the top of that foot gently on top of my opposite thigh, and I'm going to sit nice and tall. 
straight spine, and I'm going to relax my palms on top of my leg and bow forward with a straight spine. And what I'm doing is I'm actually using the forearms to rest against my inner thigh muscle so that when I do bow forward and my shoulders stay down, the upper body weight is going to help open up those hip flexors even a little bit more. So honor that flexibility. If you can't go too far, just stop there, but just the forearm up against the inner thigh. That's it, not the elbow so much, just the, the forearm. And as you bow forward, you'll feel that, that inner thigh muscle getting a good stretch. And there's these adductor muscles on the inner thigh that are getting stretched, as well as the abductors on the outside of your thigh. So these are muscles that we forget to use. I mean, sure, we can take a walk to the mailbox, but when are you opening up these hip flexors, right? Or are you taking your dog or cat for a walk? <laughs> All right, so those are important muscles. So just relax that out and shake out that whole right hip. Woohoo, that was a lot of work for that hip. Now let's switch to the opposite leg. So stretch your left leg out. Now we couldn't do this without all that shoulder work we did earlier to relax it. So now remember, you're at the edge of your chair with your sits bones because you need lots of room behind you here. And we're going to keep the spine nice and straight. And as we lift the left leg up, see if you can keep that L shape with your torso so that the, only the upper part of your back is being supported by the chair behind you. And as you lift it gently a little further from that L shape, we're getting maybe a quarter of the way up. Back and forth using both hands. Remember the upper, the chair is, is supporting your upper back. Keep your spine straight. You're using your biceps here to pull that leg up, right? Good. You can go a little higher if that's comfortable for the back of your hamstrings. All the way up. Flex your heel. You can feel that muscle all the way down. Good. Now take your opposite hand, hold on to the chair or, or, or the earth, and swing that leg out a little bit to the side, maybe only a quarter of the way out. Those hip flexors are just warming up. Good job. Hold on to the chair. Don't fall off. <laughs> don't fall off the floor. Girl. Yeah, don't fall off the floor. You should see these two back here. Woohoo! Go a little further each time, a little, little further, until your body says, okay, enough. I'm listening. I'm not going to go beyond my limits. I'm going to honor that flexibility because it takes time to get that good stretch all the way out. My toes are waving at you. And back. Good job. So now these are important movements because those hip flexors get stiff, right? And then let's see if we can put that um, strap off <laughs> and interlace our fingers again. And we're going to massage those internal organs by hugging that knee to the chest. When you do that, maybe you can get your nose to your knee. Maybe not. That's it. And take a breath in. Release a little bit. Exhale again. Now what are we doing is we're massaging even the muscles around the heart and the heart. And also the descending colon. A little bit more for the digestion. Good. Nice. And then raising the knee up and down. Feeling the calf muscles and the hamstrings again. Flexing your heel. Woo. Good for the knees to get flexation. Good job, everybody. We look like can-can dancers. Even Dito. <laughs> I love it. All right, now rotate your ankle in one direction and then the other. Nice, I can see everybody, good job. All right, how's that feeling so far? Think that hips had enough? No, we have to do one more thing. We have to place that left foot up on top of the right thigh and sit nice and tall, remember? So keep your, keep your sit bones at the edge of the chair. And if you can rest the top of your foot on top of the thigh, all the better. Remember, it's the forearm of the uh, same side of the leg that's up that's going to rest on just the inner thigh. And we're going to sit nice and straight and tall, and we're going to lean forward on the exhale. And when we lean forward, we're going to keep our shoulders down so that the extra, weight, <laughs> the extra weight of the body leans into that inner thigh. And when it leans into that inner thigh, then you're getting that hip flexor to open up even more. Good job, everybody. You can just, yeah, that's good. You guys in the back, they, they're pros back here. They got it figured out. All right. Up and down. A couple more times so you can really feel that hip flexor warming up, moving out, getting the mobility you need. Be gentle with yourself. If this, this hip might be giving you some problems, be, honor that flexibility. Good. All right. Now, I'm going to have you release that leg down and shake it out a little bit, but I want you to stay where you are in your chair. 
I want you to grab the knees. And remember, there's room behind our back. So don't sit at the back of the chair yet. Keep your sits bones at the edge because we're going to do some cat-cow stretches. And so I want the ladies on the floor to get on your hands and knees. And as we grab our knees in the chair, we're going to rock forward on the inhale, keeping our chest leading the way, looking forward on the inhale like those happy cows in India. Take a breath in, leaning forward. And then on the exhale, hold on to the knees, and then tuck the tummy in and stretch the small of the back towards the back of the chair. And that's when the kitty cat gets to stretch his back to the ceiling. The scaredy cat. And you can almost touch the back of your chair when you exhale. Tucking the belly button in. And then grab the knees and rock forward again. Beautiful. Nice stretch, everybody. Leaning forward like the happy cow. And then exhaling. That's it. Hold on to the knees on the chair. Rocking. Tuck your chin in, stretch your belly, your, your back towards the chair, tucking belly button in, good job. And then inhale again, coming forward. Nice deep breath, everybody. And then exhale, all the stale air out of the lungs, tuck the belly button in, stretch the back to the back of your chair. Good job. And then come forward. Woo, that's a lot of good movement for that spine. I love it. So we've got everything moving pretty much uh, by now, all the way down to those hips and to our knees. Now I was wondering if we could do a couple of balance poses because if you can stand and put the backs of the chairs together so that you have a balance. And uh, of course you girls can just stand up very slowly coming forward. And I'm gonna have us, now the chairs are just here for balance if you need it. I'm gonna raise up my screen just just a little bit so you can see a little bit more of my upper torso too. All right, so here's my feet. Well, maybe not. <laughs> there, here's my feet. All right, I'm going to keep my feet hip width apart. And I'm going to lift up all 10 toes and spread them nice and wide and lay them down one at a time, kind of like giving a lot of extra space in between each toe. So pinky toe first and then ring toe and then middle toe, pointer toe and then the big toe. And so what I'm going to have you do is grip the earth beneath you or the mat and rock from the ball of the foot to the heel. Back and forth. We're working on our balance. And balance is so important, right? That's right. We don't want to walk with a cane when we're 102, right? We're going to keep going. <laughs> That's it. Back and forth. And then rock from one side of your foot to the other. So now we're getting all four corners firmly uh, situated and planted into Mother Gaia. Now look down at your feet and make sure that you have equidistant toe-to-toe, heel-to-heel, -to -heel, and that they're pointing to the front of the room. <laughs> Good. So this is our foundation of this next asana, which is called Tadasana, which just basically means mountain pose. And so these are the foothills as we work our way up to the peak of our beautiful mountain. So when you're ready, I want you to tighten up the muscles, starting with the toes, so really grip the earth, feeling the earth beneath you, grounding you rooting you, and then working into the ankles and maybe lifting the arches up if you have weak uh, arches, and then engaging the muscles in the legs by tightening up the kneecaps, lifting the kneecaps up. And when you do that, that's when these thigh muscles engage. You can feel all the muscles in the legs this way. And then how are your hips? Are your hips still in alignment with your heels? So I'm going to turn sideways, and I usually wear some kind of sash or something. I'm trying to see in the mirror, in the uh, screen, if my hips are in perfect alignment with the earth. They're parallel. Instead of doing anything with a sway back where the hips lean forward in the front or they are, are you're crunching in and they're back, I want us to have our hips level to another diet. And to level them, I want you to make sure that they're directly above the heel. Okay? So that everything flows beautifully. And now where are your shoulders? Do we always walk slumped over wherever we go, you know, standing in line at the grocery store or whatever. I want you to bring the shoulders to your ears for a minute and take a deep breath. And then I want you to open your, um, your heart opening asana to release the shoulders back and down, bringing the palms with them all the way down the seams of your pants. If you have a little seam, you could just take those little pointer fingers all the way down the sides of your, of your pant, pant leg. So that means now your shoulders are in alignment with your hips and your hips are in alignment with your heels. Now, where are your ears? Is your head hanging down again? So lift your head up, be proud, and tuck it in just mm. enough so they could feel your ears might be in alignment with your shoulders. Right. 
And that being said, you have a perfect flow of all the, the vital um, fluids in the body to help strengthen our immune system. We're not hunched over, we're not restricted, we're opening up, the blood is flowing where it's supposed to go. So where is the peak of our mountain? So this is where we get to bring those arms up and over our head on the next deep inhale. And when you do that, see if you can bring your palms together, like you're creating a peak to your mountain. And I like to interlace all the fingers but the pointer one. And when I go all the way up to the heavens, I can almost imagine I am at the top of the Himalaya mountains, or the Himalayans, however we pronounce it. And I'm going to see if I can stretch my mountain to go even higher up into the ethers. And that helps me to stretch up even the rib cage from the hips, the hip flexors. So we've got lots of movement in between. Keep going, stretch, 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 till you can almost reach the stars tonight. And then on your exhale, I want you to slowly bring your palms back to your heart. I want you to feel the inner strength that you possess as well. Just like that beautiful mountain we are creating like the Himalayas that weather the storms. We do the same in our bodies, right? Season after season, year after year, right? Wind, snow, rain, right? I want you to feel you have that same inner strength to withstand all of those amazing changes that happen in our lives year after year, right? So with that inner strength right there, I want you to honor and bow and say namaste, honoring that inner strength. And come back up, take a deep breath. Ah, beautiful. And shake it out a little bit. And we're going to do a little bit of our um, balance again. I'm going to spread my chairs out a little bit more. Um, I'm going to have us swing our hips backwards this time. So I want you to stand facing one of your chairs with your hands on the chair if you need to. And just keep your torso nice and straight. Now we're not going to lean forward, we're going to just keep the torso nice and straight. And I want you to put your hand on that right hip. We're going to bring that right leg back and I want you to feel the muscle that engages when we do that. That's the gluteus maximus and medius. There's two muscles back there in each hip. And sometimes they get kind of weak. So we want to keep them nice and strong. We do a lot of sitting, you know, computer work, desk work, eating, movies, uh, laptops, whatever. Cell phones. We do a lot of sitting. Driving. And this muscle, excuse me? Driving. Driving. Yes, long distance driving, plane trips. And when we sit, these muscles don't get engaged. When we walk, they do, but how often do you walk backwards? <laughs> so, so this is a good, good opportunity to tone up, firm up <laughs> the derriere. And it feels good to me. And then you can bring the leg out to the side, too. And that's a little bit more inner thigh work. Good. And then do the same with the opposite leg, and I'll just turn so you can see. Put your hand on your left hip. Keep your, your torso erect. Stretch the heel back so you're flexing your heel, and you're feeling that, that derriere muscle engage, keeping your torso nice and straight. Good. All right. I feel that. That feels good. You guys have good balance back there. And then bring the leg out to the side. You can feel the inner thigh muscles. As if we didn't get enough of that, huh? Good. All right. Now turn and face the, uh, the screen again and use one chair for your right side, if you like. I'll, I'll be your mirror again. Okay, so that one chair for your right side. We're going to plant a tree here. We're going to rotate that left knee out to the side. And you can anchor the heel against the left ankle bone, sorry, the right ankle bone. <laughs> and you can also glide the sole of that foot up. And you have to create a muscle in the calf to do that. So hold on to the chair just to get you started, making sure that that knee is out to the side. So we're putting a lot of pressure into one hip. So honor that hip flexor. Remember, we just warmed it up. It should be stable enough to support us, hopefully. And then we're going to either bring the heel of the foot into the inner thigh and create the muscle there, or we're going to leave it down there. But we're never going to put the heel against the knee. That's right. We don't want to compromise our knees. Not bone against bone. We're going to just press it into a muscle that we have to create. And then if you'd like to just start to um, maybe to sprout a branch on one side to slowly work its way up towards the, the beautiful sun today. And if you can find the balance, you could use the chair to lean against if you need it, but focus your attention on something that's not moving. 
So try not to look at the monitor. There might be a few of us wiggling around here. So focus on something on the other side of the monitor that's not moving as you're drifting. And that's going to help you stay focused and in balance. Focus, focus. We're beautiful, everybody. And now you could spread your beautiful branches out if you can find the balance to sustain that just a little longer. Open your palms. Remember all those leaves are starting to fall now. That's right. The deciduous, is that what they're called? <laughs> and then bring your branches back to the heart of your beautiful tree. Release the roots back into the earth. Shake out that left hip or right hip. <laughs> and switch to the opposite side. That's it. Hold on to the chair if you need to. Focus your attention ahead and start to grow your tree and just honor whatever phase of development it's in today. You could leave your toes down on the earth as the roots are reaching into the earth to mingle with the roots, imagining them mingling with the roots of all the beautiful trees out here in our landscape under our house. And then either glide the sole of the foot up into the calf or into the inner thigh, anchoring it there with a nice firm muscle into the inner thigh muscle that we worked on, the adductors. And if you want to branch or sprout one branch and then the other, focus your attention on one spot across the room. This is a beautiful balance, everybody. Your body will appreciate it. You're gaining strength. It's also good for um, bone density because we're, we're putting pressure and, and, and uh, lengthening. And, and uh, what do you call that? Uh, can't remember the, the name of the word, what we're doing, but we're doing it. Elongating. <laughs> Elongating. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> putting a little pressure into the bones to strengthen them. And then spread your wings, your sweet. Spread your branches beautifully wide, honoring this beautiful sunshine that's nourishing your tree, this beautiful inner spirit. Bring your branches back to the trunk, to the heart of your tree, in prayer position, and release the roots. Beautiful, nice. Ooh, shake it out, nice. And I'm gonna have you come back to your chair because I'd like to Focus a little bit more on our breathing now. So take a sip of water, rehydrate, segment of refreshment. Sit with your legs up, if you will. Sit nice and tall into the chair. Use the chair to support your lower back and middle back, upper back. Stretch your legs out if you want. We've done a lot of work today, and I think it's it merits a nice long shavasana. I'm going to take a sip of water while I'm sitting here, getting situated. <sighs> now this is a treat that we have Dito with us today because Dito is a pilot. And I found a wonderful saying in my yoga gems that I'd like to share with everybody. So I would, I would like you just to just close your eyes, sit with your shoulders back and down, place your palms up on top of your thighs. And just listen for a moment as we continue to allow all of the work we've done to integrate into this amazing body that we've just worked on, right? It's called the assimilation process or integration. You're reaping the rewards of what we've just done. So now use your ears and just listen with your eyes closed that your body, believe it or not, is like an airplane. If you can imagine that. And inside is seated the pilot and the self, the captain and the master. Remember, your body is like this airplane. The mind stuff is like the engine of the airplane, right? And the senses are like the wings of your airplane. By means of this airplane of body and mind, yourself or your captain, the master of your, of your uh, airplane, um, flies peacefully and carefully over the mountains, over the rivers, over the valleys of problems. Think about that. And as radar and searchlight and constant communication are supplied to guide the pilot, then so in meditation, Constant information, suggestions, and guiding hints are manifested by nature. So think about that. And what are they? They are light, sound, current, and other things. And if constant attention now, constant attention, 
is given, then this little airplane will reach its destination success successfully. And as a pilot opposes gravity, a small mistake may give gravitational forces a chance to create an accident. Oh, hmm. Well, likewise, a small mistake in our vigilance may offer a chance to gravitational forces of drives and desires to maybe cause an accident of mental forces by throwing them into the ocean and the mountains of other directions. So with that in mind, your body is like that airplane. Remember, inside is seated you, the pilot. You're the captain and the master of this beautiful body. And all that mind stuff is the engine of the airplane and the senses are the wings. So by means of this airplane of body and mind, yourself is going to fly peacefully and carefully over the terrain of our lives, over the mountains, over the rivers, and the valleys of our problems. So a little bit of analogy here. I want you to close your eyes and fly free, fly peacefully, relax in releasing and just letting go. That's it. of that gong slowly fading off into the distance and the sound of my voice is slowly bringing you back for a safe landing. <laughs> I want you to slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. That's it. And I want you to take a nice deep breath now and as you do that drop your arms to the sides of the chair and lift them up on that deep inhale. Lifting all the way up, leaning back into that chair. Raising those arms all the way up until the palms come together, and then as you exhale, releasing them slowly down. Those are your wings coming down for a landing, slowly releasing till you feel the sides of the chair. And then again, raise them out and up. This time, look up and watch them coming into a landing together. And keep them in that prayer position as you slowly release them towards your heart. Releasing helps to remind us to release something within our bodies, our minds, our lives that no longer serve us. We need to make room inside for what truly does serve us, right? For our safe landing with more unconditional love, divine inspiration, gratitude, joy, and wonder. And how about peace and freedom? Freedom to be. Freedom to be. Yes, our true, authentic selves. So, May you be at peace, and may your hearts remain open, and may you awaken to the light of your own true, authentic self. And may you be healed, and may you, yes, each and every one of you, be a source of healing for others. So, namaste. Thank you so much for joining us today. Namaste. Have a beautiful week, and if you feel so compelled, to donate a little bit of little love donation to the Center of Universal Light, who is actually supporting the Zoom program for us today. Uh, there is a link on my website where you can just click a button for PayPal and you can um, direct your PayPal to go to your bank account for a direct uh, 
transfer deposit to the Center of Universal Light. So my website is carolsgentleyoga.com. Have a beautiful week. We'll see you next Monday at 11 o'clock from Mexico. Woohoo! Namaste. Love you all. Thanks for coming.